Hi there, this is Olaf from the Amland, and you're listening to Collision Radio. Hello there, this is Olaf speaking. Hi Olaf, it's Kat, how are you? I'm doing really, really well, thank you. It's a beautiful morning here in Gothenburg, Sweden. How are you doing? I'm I'm all right. Uh, Amaranth, you guys are getting ready to release a new album. Exactly. Uh, we have uh, the Helix coming out in um, on October 19th, uh, so that's really, really exciting. It's been eight or nine months since we started to work on uh, the album, so it's um, going to be really fantastic to hear what people think about it. Yeah. And, well, I have been listening to it, and, of course, like your past albums – you guys have absolutely no limitations on the sounds that you're going to hear in the album, but this one is a little bit heavier than past Amaranth albums. Yeah, I mean, we, we had some elements on, it, um, on the previous albums that we wanted to, uh, to bring back, and uh, we didn't want to create like, um, like a nostalgia record or go back to a previous sound or whatever, but bring some elements back from all the different albums make it sort of like a resume of our entire career so far. Bring in a lot of new elements, <clears throat> with a new singer and new perspectives on what we already done, and some new things entirely, and um, just take that to 11, basically. Yeah, because, like, I'm wondering, because you have songs like GG6 that's, like, full-on, like, that is really heavy, that track. And then you've got other tracks that are quite poppy sort of like they've got a heavy element but they're more pop inspired and then you've got Unified which is a beautiful rock ballad. I can understand how you guys kind of create what you're feeling at the time in the studio but how do you make that into a cohesive album? I think that uh, the band from the beginning has always been about trying to be as diverse as possible because we obviously have a you know wide range of different uh, influences from different genres and, and so on. And um, not only do we want that to shine through in you know just a specific song, but we also want like um, let's say just like your own mood, you know how it switches and changes throughout the week or throughout the year or whatever. I mean, no person just goes around in the same kind of mood all the time. So I think that um, this album is very reflective of how we are as people, that sometimes you're in a state of anger and sometimes you're just in a very relaxed and uh, sort of comfortable mood and whatever. And uh, it's also really interesting as a composer to try, you know, some wildly different things. Because just like you said, uh, Demon 6 is massively different from from Unified. And it's, it's all, you know, different perspectives on the same thing, almost like viewing a four-dimensional object, for example, that you're not only looking at it from, you know, different spatial you know, perspectives, but also different from different emotional perspectives. Do you ever take a, a new track you've composed into the studio and Elise and Nils sometimes think that you're a little bit crazy maybe and that they can't, you know, sing to that? Well, I think that they are very, very versatile vocalists, and um, yep. Elise writes a lot of the, the vocal lines. I think for this album, she wrote like the, the majority of it. So, um, I mean, for example, with Unified, she came up with a, a vocal line that uh, Nils is in that, in that song, and it wasn't necessarily, uh, you know, adjusted to herself. So when she was singing it in the demo version, it sounded really good. Mm. But um, as soon as Nils sang it, it sounded absolutely perfect because she had written it very, very specifically for Nils. So that's the really cool thing about working with such, you know, talented vocalists is that you can throw almost anything at them and they will make like a really cool and really amazing interpretation of it. Yeah, I think Unified actually shows what beautiful rock voices both of them have. Yeah, exactly. And it's a little bit of an um, old school sort of, you know, power ballad, rock ballad kind of thing. And Nils really has that sort of almost 80s uh, rock star kind of flair to him. So we wanted that aspect of him to shine a little bit extra on that song. Yeah, definitely. And you've only had two lineup changes, both of them being the male vocal sort of side of it. I mean, the first lineup change was um, switching Andy to uh, Henrik in 2013. Hmm. And um, I think that Andy, when he started with the band, he wasn't really expecting it to take off as, as it did. So I mean, um, already from the very first second when we released um, the first album and the first singles, things kind of kicked into high gear with touring and everything. And <clears throat> he was already a father at that point. 
So, mm. so for him, it became a little bit overwhelming with, with all the touring and everything. So I suppose that was by far the main reason why, why he stepped down. And the situation with, uh, with Jake, when he left the band in 2016, I think it was sort of a similar situation as well, that um, it's kind of a difficult thing. If you're not only in a band that's touring constantly, but you're also trying to, you know, take a lot of responsibility and work a lot with the administration of Jake did. I think it just came to a point where it was just too much, basically. But for, for him, it was just easier to start his own band where we could uh, run things and make sure that it was actually adjusted to his own schedule. Yeah. So pretty much you guys all came together with your different influences and somehow you've just melded together into this unique band that is really groundbreaking in in the heavy metal scene particularly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, if you take uh, every band member individually, everybody comes from, uh, you know, widely different musical backgrounds, uh, partly, you know, from different um, places in the metal genre, but also, you know, like the Delete, for example, comes from a different musical world entirely. And besides that, I mean, if I just speak for myself personally, I have a you know, wide array of different genres and, you know, styles that I love. So it's really cool to try to incorporate all of that while still trying to make it, trying to make it coherent. And just like I say, I, I'm always hoping that the end result is still something that makes sense and something that keeps us apart a bit from the past because there could kind of the archetypical um, blends of genres these days that you have neoclassical metal and symphonic metal and you have the, I don't know, you know, the death metal and, and whatever. But I think that we wanted something that was you know, instantly recognizable compared to other bands. Yeah. And you guys, you do, like, this album is pretty awesome and I'm, I have to listen to it more to see if I can replace my favorite Amaranth track, which is one that is in definitely my top 20 tracks that I like to listen to, which is Limitless. I love that song. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that is also a very, very different kind of track. I mean, Limitless was sort of, it was an experiment, uh, but it would be like to just work with, um, with a lot of, you know, digital sounds to begin with, but then having the whole band kick in uh, before the, uh, just before the second chorus. So I think it's, it's almost quintessential when it comes to, um, the, you know, the, the contrast uh, and everything. It's just brought to, uh, to sort of the next level because usually we, we mix up and blend things, but here I think the different parts are sort of, you know, strongly differentiated. Mm-hmm. And um, just in general, I think it became a very sort of emotional track. It started as an experiment, but turned into a pretty unique song, actually. Awesome. Tom, first listen to the album Helix, Inferno is probably standing out as my favourite track to begin with, but I do have to listen to it more. Oh, cool. Yeah. And is- I mean, that, that's all, um, also something that I was referring a little bit to, to earlier, because if you take like like the intro and the movie The Verse as well, it's something that could almost have appeared on the first couple of records. So yeah. it was something that we hadn't really done musically for, I guess, five or six years. It was really, really cool to bring back a little bit of those, you know, aggressive rhythms and a little bit more technical drums and guitars. And um, but I, I still think that it's a very new take, and especially, you know, with the chorus and with the, with the breakdown and everything. It's so, sort of almost like a reinterpretation of the fun, foundation to the band. Yeah, awesome. And um, you are touring over in Europe at the moment, or you're going to, and you have toured Australia before. Any plans to tour this album here sometime next year? We're actually um, currently looking at opportunities to, to come and play in Australia. We started, like, I guess it was two or three days ago, so very recently, uh, because it's something that we've been wanting to do for, for such a long time, but there hasn't been, you know, any clear opportunities. And it's uh, interesting because um, the last Facebook page, for example, I'm already back in the MySpace days. We have been getting a lot of messages from Australia and great support, and I can see that the, um, the albums are doing quite well over there. So it's something that I've been, and we've been hoping to do for a very long time. So I think definitely next year we will be able to come over to Australia. Yeah. Well, I think Amaranth as a band are pretty damn amazing and I just I love the way you just mix everything together and throw it on an album and it all just works. You can sit there from start to finish and listen to the album and 
it takes you to so many different places along the way. Yeah, I mean, that's sort of the concept, and thank you. I mean, it's a musical journey for ourselves, naturally, because it's our full-time job and um, keeps us really, really, really busy. So it's really cool to try to, you know, take the listener along on that musical journey at the same time as well. Yeah, and the 19th of October, the album is released, but you do have the single 365 out now, and you've got a pretty awesome video for that out as well. Is there something you want to say to your Australian fans? I mean, um, just want to thank all the Australian fans for, for the support. I know that, just like I said before, that there's been a lot of people that have been in touch, so I just hope that, you know, very soon you can, you can come and play for all I feel in fans. So I'm actually looking forward to it. And uh, definitely check out the, the new album as soon as it comes out. Yeah, well, we're really looking forward to you coming over too because I haven't seen you before. I'm sure the shows are just as massive as the sound on the album. It, it'll be a good experience. Hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> we will, definitely. Awesome. I'll tell people that they can find out more about you at amaranth.se. Exactly, so keep an eye on that site or um, our Facebook page. Yeah, facebook.com forward slash Amaranth Band. <laughs> I almost said the band. Yeah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think Amaranth was just taken, so you just add, added band to that. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Thank you so much. It has been great talking to you. And um, yeah, I really. Yeah, I'm sorry for the connection problem. So it was a pleasure to talk to you, Kat. Yeah, that's okay. Maybe next time you'll be actually in Australia when we have a chat. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It will be a lot easier. I really... Have a great evening and uh, hope to see you soon. Yeah, definitely. And I really do admire your band. Keep up the great work. We will, definitely. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Take care.